Hey everyone, John Gonzalez here from MLive.com and Michigan's Best. And today we're talking tamales. Two special guests joining us today, Raul from Grand Rapids and Julie from Detroit. And we're gonna tell you about a little history and why we enjoy them during the holidays. As I said, uh, we're gonna talk uh, tamales and I, we have some a couple of guests with us today. Uh, I'm calling this the Talking Tamales uh, with Gonzo on MLive.com. <laughs> Tamale talk. Tamale talk, yeah. Tamale talk, <laughs> right? Uh, our first guest, ladies first, is Julie Zavala, Julie Stevens, right, Julie? Yes, yep. <laughs> Get that right. Um, and you are joining us from Southwest Detroit. Uh, and then uh, also on the show is Raul Alvarez, a good friend of mine based here in Grand Rapids. How you doing, Raul? Hey, man. Another beautiful day to be talking tamales, man. Every day, right? Yeah, yeah. Every it's like day. it's like my standards. Like going, why why do we just have them at the holidays, right? I mean, they're so good. You eat them, and you go like, we should have these year round. Oh well, my yeah. god, no! Agreed. <laughs> could you? But could you guys? Could you imagine all the masa? And that's there's a reason why there's a message <laughs> to the madness. <laughs> well, there We'd would all be, a, be like <laughs> there would be a masa shortage. But I got to tell you, man, that's right. And you know, Marty, right, Marty. Holy cow, they do those, they 24 seven over there, man. That's, yeah, that's what they do, right? We're, we're gonna talk about, so Raul is on the show for a couple of reasons. Number one, he's a good friend of mine and I know we could talk to tamales or talk whatever, you know, we, and we often have over the last several years and especially this this year with the, with the pandemic, Raul and I check in with each other periodically. So it's, it's always good just to get, 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 get with him. And then Julie and I have been meaning to connect with you because you're doing some fun things in, in Detroit and I'm on Instagram and I see Detroit loves tacos. And I'm like, what is that? I, I need to go check this out. I, you're at Nancy whiskey, which is one of my favorite neighborhood bars. And I'm like, I need to get to know this person. Oh yeah, for sure. What's better than tacos and tequila, you know, yeah, right? you get your that's taco it. on, you can do some shots after. <laughs> then that's your mic drop right there, man. Tacos. Like, that's it right tacos, we can go home now right yeah, tacos and yeah. tequila so hey let's let's get into a little bit of background with each one of you and then we'll talk about some cool places that you like to visit for tamales during the holidays why they're at the holidays and just get into a lot of different topics but but let's start with you uh julie that uh, we already kind of you know burst the bubble there tell us a little about yourself the, the only thing i really know about you is that you have a big family oh yeah i'm the youngest of 15 oh. uh yeah my, my mom <laughs> This is funny, my dad and my mom, she's like, there was no television back then. You know, <laughs> there's a 25 year gap between me and my oldest brother. So yeah, I was wow. the oops baby. You know, when wow. your mom says, she literally thought I was a tumor, but yeah. <laughs> True tell story. Us about, was, tell us about your food totally truck. Tell, that. <laughs> tell us about your food truck and about your food passion. <laughs> well, um, so actually I'm an insurance agent for 23 years. I'm actually giving it up December 31st of this month to take on my food truck full time. Um, my husband, my now husband actually uh, purchased me one after eating, uh, I made him dinner three times. After the third dinner, he's like, no, no way. The whole world has to taste this. And he purchased me a, a, a taco truck and it's getting worked on right now. So we're gonna, we're gonna hit the road in a few months and uh, be able to pursue my dream and my passion. So I'm excited. You know, we'll still be at Nancy's and we'll have another carry out, but we're also gonna have the truck mobile for you know, fiestas and, you know, things like that to go to the, you know, different places. What will you uh, be selling uh, outside of tacos? Um, actually, I cook Puerto Rican food as well. I'm 100% Mexican, but uh, I grew up, you know, in Southwest is mixed. So my best friend's mom showed me how to make empanadas. I can make the Puerto Rican arroz con gandules. I can make, they make their pork chops a certain way. They sell out every Thursday. We do a Caribbean day at Nancy's. And I, I kind of infuse everything. Um, I spend a little time in Miami, so I make bomb Cuban sandwiches. My Cubanos are like amazing. You know, it's just, they're legit. They're the way they're supposed to be made. So, um, you know, I do that. It's gonna be a little bit, you know, of everything, but we're gonna keep the Latin flavor going. Just keep it, you know, keep it going like that. So I'm excited about it. We had, a good good. we had a good reception from our tacos and because it's not we're not your average taco because everybody's like why would you guys pursue that in southwest detroit or in your area when you know that it's it's saturated the area is flooded taco trucks on every corner but my food is different 
I, I, I cook with love. So I care what I'm, I'm making for the people. I wouldn't serve you, but I wouldn't serve my family. Right. You know, well, we'll look so, forward to uh, getting to Detroit once this uh, pandemic slows down, I guess, and, and things. Open yeah, for up sure. Like, you got to come up to Nancy's and see us. Oh, I, I'm planning. I, uh, anything <laughs> at Nancy's is, is good with me. And Raul, let's, let's go to you real quick, because, you know, like I said, we've been friends for a long time and, and I yeah. seem to learn something new about you every time. Um, <laughs> you, tell me about your, your family background and, and your love for, for food. Well, uh, ours was only, only a family of eight, right? Uh, so, only. Only, right? And I think that had to do with something that was more to do with, I don't know, lack of television as much as you know, being a good Catholic family. I don't know how good a Catholic family would work if we only had eight, right? But nonetheless, <laughs> right? So um, I, I remember fondly, right? I remember, you know, I, I was born in, you know, in Ciudad de Nueva, uh, Nuevo León in, in Mexico. And that's like one of the northernmost states in, the, in that country. And I, I still remember, you know, from when I was able to walk, just you know, as far as my memory goes, always enjoying tamales. And I think at one point I kidded. In fact, I think I sent you something along those lines, John. That I'm pretty sure my mom started feeding me as soon as my teeth came in. It's like, yeah, you're ready for tamales, right? But, but you know, I, I have these great memories of not just back then, but once we moved to the States when I was six and having grown up with five sisters who just by, you know, by the culture, right? But traditional culture defaulted up most of the cooking. But it was an assembly line. I remember those days. It was an assembly line, you know, uh, that, that they formed to make the tamales, right? You'd have someone with the corn husk that would spread the masa, then someone pass it to the other that would do the filling, pass it to the other that would fold it up. And then, you know, the other one would, would stack it in the olla, right, in the pot uh, to get ready to steam. And then there was like a, like a floater that made sure there was enough masa and there was enough of the filling and, and you know, the corn husk were being soaked correctly, all of that. So I just have fond memories of that. Um, but, you know, I, I um, man, I love food back then more than, I, well, I shouldn't say I don't enjoy it now, right? <laughs> Do I have to be more careful? But man, I love food. I love my tortillas and all that. And I just have these great memories, you know, the aroma of I'm walking into Casa de Alvarez on any given day. So much so that when I was growing up in Holland, after we moved from, you know, from Texas to Holland back in the mid seventies, um, we had we had the poorest house of all of my friends. Cause I didn't have many Mexican friends in Holland back then. There weren't, there weren't that many of us, but everyone loved to hang out there. And a lot of it was the food, right? They just love it. They'd come in, mom was making tortillas starting at 4.30, 5 o'clock every morning to feed everybody, make lunches. Um, man, they just love everything. And then when tamales came around, my first introduction to some of my friends with tamales, I had to share this story with you. So my friend Jeff, who's still a friend now, he lives in Lansing and still a friend now. Um, and we laugh about this. So the first time that I introduced him to tamales, my mom, of course, making them, it was during the holiday season. And I said to him, hey, you got to try these tamales, you know. He goes, oh, I've heard of them. So, you know, there's different varieties. These are spicy, whatever. And it was like a, he had stopped by after school on a Friday. So he took him home and Monday, uh, we didn't talk weekend, but Monday I said to him, hey, did you get a chance to try those? Man, those are so good. And then he says, but they were kind of chewy. And I said, oh, Jeff. So did you, no. remove, did you remove the cornhouse? He goes, dude, I didn't know I was supposed to, right? So I still laugh about that. I got to tell you, Matt, but what's that? Well, no, I was going to say, Julie's laughing because I think everyone that is, that is uh, Hispanic and knows about the mice has a similar story, right, Julie? Oh, my God, yes. I took them to a Christmas party, and one of my bosses, it was like three owners, and one of the bosses was in the kitchen. And before, by the time I turned around to put the salsa down, he already had it in his mouth. And he's like, <sighs> and he's like, oh, these are good. And I'm, I couldn't stop laughing. And I'm like, wait, take it up. <laughs> Hey, you know what? That reminds me of the Gogurt, right? The kids have the yogurt thing. Just squeeze it out. <laughs> a Gogurt tamale. I gotta, but I got to tell you, though, so when, when we launched the Tamales Berry food truck a couple of years ago, we literally, part of the news story, because all the TV stations covered it, one of the TV stations I said to me, hey, can we do a really, a really quick lesson on how to eat them? And we really went step by steps, and people were digging it. 
Right? It's like, oh, you got to remove this thing. Yeah, anyway. I, I will we'll talk about what Tamala's uh, Mary in a second. No, no, that's fine. Right, right. Just real quick on, 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 the, on, on that part of the culture, right? Is I think I learned early on that a lot of my American friends didn't understand them, right? So I went the extra step of explaining them almost <laughs> all the time. I would bring over some tamales, even at, I remember at an office Christmas party, you know, a potluck we did back in the early 90s. And I brought a bunch over and I said, okay, first things first, make sure to take them out of the husk. And I would say nine out of 10 people would say, oh, I didn't know you, I didn't know you had to do that, you know? Yeah. Yep. And it's just funny how it still continues today, right? Yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't laugh a week. I mean, you can't help it, right? It's like, no, oh my no God. you can't, but it's, 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 it's was, an interesting story. I was cracking up because I did a little bit of uh, history research for this too, because I'm like, well, where, how did, you know, the minds originate? Because it's kind of like at our age, they're just there. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Where do they come from? And I'm laughing and laughing. My husband's like, what's, what are you laughing at, Julie? And I'm like, oh my God, thank God that the Aztecs changed their culture and they no longer use human sacrifices and they started, right. you know, they started using tamales <laughs> because instead of all of us gathering for Christmas, making tamales, we'd be like preparing Tia Maria for sacrifice. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is so oh, funny, tia. man. It's only one less Tia, right? Oh, yeah. I, 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 love it. I love it. I love it. I couldn't stop laughing, yeah. Well, that's, hey, that's just real that. quick, real quick along the lines of the Aztec, because that's really kind of what this originated, right? And a lot of, yeah. and, and there's, a, you know, there's some history that points to how it actually was, uh, the name actually, come, you know, there's some talk about where the name came from and had to do with an Aztec word, an Aztec word that the, the, the definition of yeah. which was believed covered, right? Which kind of makes sense, and if you kind of put it together, but yeah, we'd rather have that than Tia Maria or Tio Juan or whoever <laughs> sacrificed, right? I'm all yeah. for that, right? Yeah. I'm not a cannibal by any means. So I'm not although, like, come on. although I did not like my Tia Tia Juana's mashed potatoes, and that's another story for a different another day. <laughs> <laughs> so you would sacrifice Tia Juana instead of Tia Maria, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, wait a minute. I hope she didn't put those in the tamal because that sounds really gross, man. Oh no, she. Did. <laughs> So I will save that story for another for another. All podcast. right, we're good. I love that's it, man. Awesome. Um, I'll tell you what, Raul, you brought up the the uh, the fact. Hold on a second. The, the history. Go ahead, man. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. You brought up the history a little bit, and, and so did Julie. Um, let's 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 get a um, common another common misconception, or let's get something out there to clarify things. Yeah, it, we we always say in you know, in English, I guess Americanized version is tamales, right? That's what helps. Yes. Say. Yep. In the Mexican culture, it's tamales, right? Yes. Yeah. And then if you're just to have just one, it's a tamal. So yeah. Carl, can you explain that the 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 the, the, the language there? I mean, what, what is what is the difference between a tamale and a tamal? Well, you know, it's um it's as simple as as a grammatical thing, but be, because the misconception has been there forever. People just go, you know, and 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 I've had conversations with friends about this. Sounds silly, but because they get mad at me. What do you mean it's tamal? It's a tamale. No, it's a tamal, right? We're so used to, you know, you get to a point where you just accept it, right? But it, it literally is as simple as a grammatical singular versus plural, plural. right? It's almost like bus, buses. It's not right. busse, buses, right? So it is that simple, but it irritates people because they always want to talk about the tamale. No, it's not a tamale, right? It's a tamale. It's that simple, right? And I think it, and it goes, but it, you know, it goes back to just different misconceptions about tamales, right? And what they are and what they can't be. Because one of the beauties of tamales is the diverse, the versatility of them. Oh right? yeah. You can you can, you can put let's face it, you can put anything in a but you can have a friendly meal. You can have them with your eggs in the morning, you can have them yes. for lunch with rice and beans, you can have them at lunch with a, you know, with some other protein type thing. But to your point, I mean, <laughs> I actually had someone do a peanut butter and jelly tamale because I'm a big fan of peanut butter and jelly. And it sounds horrible, but it was actually pretty good. It was really gooey, right? And someone this Thanksgiving suggested to me that, well, you know what, for Thanksgiving, why don't we do a turkey and stuffing tamale? And I'm like, I don't know, why not? That you can't, it's that you can't, you don't say no to it, right? It's like right. a couple of years ago when, you know, I was experimenting with something and I had someone try a chorizo tamale and, and it's so like crazy. Chorizo and queso fresco, it's so like crazy. They couldn't keep it in stock. So that's the beauty of that. I mean, go to your point though. I mean, it, it throws people off. It's just a misconception and it is as simple as a grammatical, right? Yeah, and uh, I think that, 
I, I think to our old, it's, it's, I always compare it to the word punchki, right? Agreed. We love in Michigan, we love our punchki, right? During, during the Fat Tuesday. But punchki is plural, you know, and a lot of people don't know that. So like, oh, hey, I'm going to eat my punchki. No, it, uh, it's called a, uh, I want to say a, a, a check. Pechki? It's P-A-C-Z-E-K. That's, that's the singular, just one. <clears throat> punchki is plural, meaning yep. more than so it's, it's the same thing, right? Everyone Agreed. Kind of butch, 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 but hey, you're getting into something interesting, which, which, is, the, which is the filling. So um, Julie, you, you've done some research because let's get to some of your favorite places in Southwest Detroit, because we're putting together this list for MLive.com on where are the tastiest tamales uh, around the state of Michigan. And we've got a lot of the state covered from Lansing to Grand Rapids. We'll get the tamales, uh, Mary here in a second, um, you know, heart, to Southwest Michigan <clears throat> and Lansing, but but Detroit, Southwest Michigan, you know that area pretty well. And tell us some of your favorites there. Yep. Oh man, a staple in our community is the Tamaleria Nuevo Leon. Um, I have their tamales with me now. Like the flavor is amazing. They've been there forever. Like we're, we're more Mexican Americanized. So instead of really having the tamale party and stuff like that, my mom, you know, she's single mom. So it was like, she'll go, yeah, we have tamales. We're not going to sit around and make them. Mom's going to go to the tamaleria and they'll magically be tamales there, you know. And uh, so tamale, the tamaleria no leon is my first, uh, first on my list. And then the second is a gem that I found in a, in a convenience store, Supermercado, there in southwest Detroit on Werner. So inside there, um, it's La Jalicencia. Mm. So inside there, you can get everything, chicharrones, tacos, you can get a piñata, you can get anything you need. And they have really good tamales. It's like a little hidden gem. And then I think my third, um, I think I put them third on my list was, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever had El Salvadorian tam tamales. Mm -hmm. no. They're amazing. And there's a pupusaria on Livernoy in Detroit. And when I tell you, they make them in the banana leaves and it's, you only need one. You, they're huge. They're super huge, yeah. and but they have like a, a sauce in them with the carne. That's you take your fork and slice in, and it just is bursting with like the the sauce and the meat. Uh. They're amazing. They are, and it's it used to be a garage, and the family you know construction, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. They make they make the best papusas and the tamales there. Amazing, really really good. You guys got to check it out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's El Salvadorian tamale. And then uh, there's little markets, like there's a staple in our community as well as Evie's. That's a traditional, that was in your last one from 2016. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like everybody knows Evie's, right. you know, you can get any kind there, the jalapeno and cheese, any kind you want. And then last but not least is a, there's a, another supermarket. It's called Prince Valley on Michigan Avenue. You would never think it, but it's a very clean, really pretty market. Inside they have an area where they make hot food. The tamales are good. If you're on the go, you're on Michigan Avenue. It's right off the, the strip to the right. And their, their salsas are really good and everything. So those have to be my top five. Great. Well, we'll make sure to include those in our list here. Um, Raul, uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, Grand Rapids area and specifically Tamales Mari, because she's getting ready to open up a new location in West yeah. Michigan. Um, if there's any doubt that the tamales are not more, they're not a fad. You know, they're, they're something that, that are a big part of uh, the restaurant industry. I yeah. think the Mahdi's Mahdi proves that, right? Yeah. They've proven the success. They've only been open for a few years and yep. they're selling, they're, they're popular. How popular are they? Well, let me put it this way. Uh, to make, to announce that you're opening a second location during a pandemic, what does that tell you? Yeah. Right? I mean, seriously, at a, at a time when only takeout right now, right? Um, that's very telling, but you know, the popularity of the, of the tamal uh, continues to grow because I go back to the, you know, the versatility, not only that, <clears throat> but here's, and this is interesting because traditionally tamales, you make it with, with, um, with lard, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, right. it's just traditionally, that's the way, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the way I remember my mom making them. Tamales Mari's recipe is very different. She does not use lard, so it makes it gluten-free. She can make vegetarian and then she can do special, a special order vegan. That's part of the popularity and growth of her specific tamales. And a lot of it had to do because I've gotten to work with Mary for, this will be three years now. But when, you know, 
when we were able to, it's amazing the power of the food truck and you're seeing it, right? But when when that was, when that came about and, and we were able to bring the mobile food truck to downtown Grand Rapids. And then because of that, the response was people wanted it at weddings. They wanted it at graduations. They wanted it at their employee parties. The branding that we did um, just exploded. I mean, to give you an idea, the first after the first year of that food truck three years ago, catering catering sales grew by six hundred percent. Think wow. about that, right? And that's a poly truck. That was that was a that was a small. It's it's called it's actually called a um, um, mobile food unit because it's literally a nine by twelve. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, uh, not even nine by twelve. It's like a six by twelve, and it's all eco friendly. It's all uh, solar and and uh, and electric. Oh, wow. So that's all of that, right? So, but but the branding that that happened with that, I mean, it exploded. And if you tell if you talk to other uh, restaurants that sell tamales, they'll tell you that they have probably benefited from it. it brought the tamal to a whole new audience and market downtown that had never probably tried it. And all of a sudden, you know, because of the, when, when that was being branded, it was literally, it was even more so popularizing the tamal even more, not just tamales mari. Again, if you ask other restaurants. And so a lot of people, a lot of, I mean, the, the restaurants that did sell tamales benefited as much as mari did, but you have to give, you know, you have to have a passion for tamales, bottom line. You don't just yeah. say, I think I'll make tamales. You have to have right. a passion. No, that's labor intensive, yeah. Right, labor intensive, time intensive and all that. So, <laughs> um, and then for example, when you see the annual promotions and sales that that a, that a business like Tamales Mari do, does, I will give you an example, Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving, the big, big special, you know, you sell them a dozen for obviously as a special promotion, 5,000 tamales in one day that they sold. Wow. They work for 48 hours straight, just rotating people to make them. And they sold, them. and they're probably going to sell more with their Christmas special. But it goes back to John, to your point. It goes back to the popularity, not just of tamales mari, but the tamales, which is huge because of the versatility. I mean, she's serving 18 varieties, and she's looking to expand it even more. In fact, she does sell Salvadorian ones because she does use the, the you know the the plant leaf, right? Yep. Mole tamale, that's killer. John, I don't know if you ever had it. Mole. Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. I, oh I've my had God. it. I'm right? craving it right now. I was the only one in this group that didn't bring tamales to the party. <laughs> you have some there, Raul. Show us your I tamales do. there. They don't want to yep. get personal, but show them to us. <laughs> Dude, absolutely. Man. Look, we have the, the, green, the green sauce one, which is spicy, which I love. Oh. And I actually brought a Oh no! I, I thought I brought dessert one. This is the um, the chile rojo, which is not spicy. But I, I think someone ate my my strawberry one because that's one of the two <laughs> two, two dessert flavors: strawberry and piña, which are also. Julie, I know you, I know you have some as well. Where are they from again? Uh, yep, I have one from uh, the ones from Nuevo León. They're a bit. Uh, these are the the pork ones, and then I have the ones from La Jalisencia, and those are the chicken, the verde. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with salsa verde. Little yeah. pica, but they're good. Really, really good. That's the best, the spicy sauce, man. Yeah, that's how I am. Yeah. I'm all about the spices. But I'm going to have to come out there and try your spot. That's oh. like tamale to the next level. Oh, no <laughs> doubt. No, no joke. Yeah. Here's, what, here's what's cool about it. I don't know if I told you this, John, but uh, one of the TV stations showed up to do a story, and there were people in line from as far away as Lansing, no lie, and as far away wow. as Mesquite, and as far away as Salgatuck that came for that. This was the second year some of them came just for that special. And I think, again, and I'm not just talking, Tamales Mari does great work, but I think the popularity and again, the versatility, and then when you add the gluten-free and the vegetarian and the vegan options, which in the new location, for example, as you know, John, that the East Town location, they've already, the people are already asking about vegan and vegetarian options. Right. And it just makes it because of that, that just, you're expanding that universe of people that not only love the tamales, but can actually enjoy them. Right. Like both, like both of you, I've eaten tamales my my whole life. Uh, like like you, Raul, I grew up eating them as a kid. Went through the whole experience of my family. We have a family of eight, not as big as Julie's, but a family <laughs> of eight, and um, we we did the same thing. Um, but what I found through my lifetime of eating them 
is they they all come in different sizes and shapes and yep. some are heavily filled with filling some of them are lightly filled some of them have more masa than others you know so i guess real quick to wrap things up julie what would you consider like the perfect tamale i mean you mentioned spice that you like I would have to say. Wait, 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 wait! Did you say tamale, John? You're killing me! (laughs) You're killing me! I'm American Mexican. What can I say? (laughs) You're forgiven, man. (laughs) The the one thing I hate is when you you go and you you smell these tamales and you think they're great and you go to open them and it's puro masa. Isn't that horrible? That is like the most horrible thing. You know, so I you gotta have the good meat to the meat and salsa inside ratio mm. to the masa. You just can't, yeah. You gotta be fair to all my tamale makers out there. You gotta be fair to us. You gotta put that gun there. Look, look, look that's that. a perfect. I'm coming out there for those. Right, that's yes, it. Yes, I'm gonna come and visit you guys. You need that hashtag though. Like tamales at the next level. <laughs> Great, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Can I agree with it, by the way? That's true because, oh my goodness, so much masa. It's just like, man, give me something. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. That's the worst thing. I think, yeah. I think my dad had a name for him. I think he called him the Gordos. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. <laughs> because it's all masa, man. That oh, should be yeah. illegal, man. That should be or, illegal. Or of those, I'm not sure what he called them. <laughs> people, seriously, restaurants that sell that, that should be illegal, man. There should be a fine yeah. for that. <laughs> That's just wrong. You're going to get a tamale ticket. I, exactly. You know what? Well, it's a good they the tamale too. See, um, <laughs> but but here's the thing: you get at the end, and all you have is masa, and you don't. Have, you ran out of filling. Someone on your team let you down, right? And you're right. like, well, well, I guess we just put a little more masa. Well, on the pants, right? Someone along the assembly line really, you know, maybe you skip that. Drop one. the ball. There's still no yeah. excuse, man. There's there's a hashtag. No excuses with that. Oh well, <laughs> I want to thank both of you for joining us here on the uh, Talking Tamales podcast with Gonzo on MLive.com. Um. Julie, please give us information. If we want to come to Southwest Detroit, Nancy Whiskey, or find out everything that you're doing on your Instagram page, give us give us the details. Yep, follow us at, uh, it's just very simple, Detroit Loves Tacos. All you got to do is um, follow us on Twitter, we're on Instagram, and we're on Facebook. We're at Nancy Whiskey's Taco Tuesday, uh, Caribbean Thursday, and I do brunch on Sundays, where I make huevos rancheros, uh, uh-huh. chiquitas verdes, you know, i I brought it, you know, we did the gravy, chorizo gravy, or we do the, the country gravy, either or everything by scratch. Damn. Biscuits and gravy. So you guys got to check us out. I'll be there Sunday. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> Bro, and give us the details on uh, Tamales Mari and, and what she has going on. Well, aside from the biscuits and gravy, everything else sounded great because I had not had good huevos rancheros in a long time. So <laughs> Tamales Mari uh, is in Wyoming, Tamales Mari GR on Facebook and Instagram um 18 varieties and it just and the passion that mary puts into it so much so that she wants to work extra hard to open a second location says a lot um yeah follow you know there's everything you need to know is on facebook about what they do um but and they have you know just fyi they have a similar promotion going on for christmas and they did for thanksgiving wednesday the 23rd 11 to 5 another 5,000 tamales will be sold and it's just um again gluten-free and you know, vegetarian available right away. And that to me shows the passion, not just with with loving to do it, but understanding that there's a whole market that should enjoy it, that you know, that needs those specialty, you know, diet that, that has those special dietary needs. So um, you know, just rocking it, man. Rocking it. But the other part is that, let me let me throw this out with tamales mari. It's a full service restaurant. John, as you've been there, right? It's not just tamales, but obviously that's their number one seller, but they've got everything. The one thing that people are missing right now, as you probably know, John, is the buffet, right? People just dig it. Yeah, one of the best buffets you'll find in the whole city. Absolutely. The Males and, of course, many, many more things on it as well. Thank you both again for joining us. I appreciate your time. And uh, Feliz Navidad. Nice hat, Julie. (laughs) Thank you. Bye. Thanks for having us. Just so you know, hang on, John. Just so you know, last time I said Feliz Navidad to someone during an interview, they thought I said fleas on your dog. Be careful when you say that. Be careful when you say that, brother. That's, that's an old Sanford and Son episode. Please, on my dog. Oh my Look it up on YouTube. Take care. So good to see you guys. Bye. Thank you. Take care.